Okay, we're back. I blew through why we create muscle-driven simulations and the stance phase. Now we're gonna talk about muscles during the, the swing phase. So rectus femoris helps initiate swing. Recall that rectus femoris is on the front of the thigh. It originates up here on the pelvis at the anterior superior iliac spine and goes down and attaches to the patella. So it's one of the quadriceps and you can see it here. It generates a hip flexion moment and it generates a knee extension moment. So it can induce motion of those degrees of freedom. But what it's particularly good at is actually moving the whole limb forward. That's what I'm showing here. Rectus femoris moves the whole leg forward. And you can see it in when it's active. So here's the rectus femoris EMG. I'm plotting versus the whole gait cycle here. So uh, the swing phase starts right about here and you see rectus femoris is on to initiate the swing phase. What I'm showing up here is just the swing phase and at the beginning of swing, the rectus femoris is highly active and pulls the limb forward. The hamstrings does just the opposite. The hamstrings help terminate swing. Your leg is swinging forward and you need it to stop the hamstrings are perfectly suited for this because they cross behind the hip, they cross behind the knee, so they generate a hip extension moment and a knee flexion moment, and of course they can actuate those individual degrees of freedom, but the muscle is particularly well suited to pulling the whole limb back. And that's what I'm indicating here. And you can see it in the excitation. So again, here's the biceps femoris long head, it's one of the hamstrings. The hamstring's actually a group of muscle. The biceps femoris long head runs out here. You can feel the tendon out there. The EMG is plotted. Here you see it's on uh, mildly during stance, but you see this big burst of activity at the end of swing to terminate the swing phase. There are a number of different uh, plots here because here's slow walking and the dark blue is fast walking and you see as you walk faster your leg is swinging faster and you need more rectus femoris to initiate swing and more hamstrings to stop swing. So those two muscles punctuate the swing phase. Now we saw from the ballistic walking model and the dynamic walking model that swing can be thought of partly as a passive activity. If you get the initial conditions right for swing, you can just fly through the air and have a successful swing. The muscle actions during double support set up the swing phase. And it's really a modulation of uh, muscles that stop the knee from flexing, rectus femoris, vasti, and soleus, and muscles that promote the knee flexion during the double support phase, the iliopsoas and the gastrocnemius. Now there's a couple things to note here. One is that, okay, you expect rectus femoris and vasti, they cross in front of the knee, they're going to decelerate knee flexion, they produce a knee extension moment. But what you also see is there's a muscle, soleus, that doesn't even cross the knee, that produces a large knee extension acceleration. It does that through that concept of dynamic coupling we covered in chapter 10. The same is true at the other side. Iliopsoas, it turns out, a muscle that only crosses in front of the hip, is highly active during the swing phase, and it generates a large knee flexion acceleration. And weakness of that muscle, for example, can lead to diminished knee flexion during the swing phase and stiff knee gait. Gastrocnemius does what you'd expect. It crosses behind the knee. It generates a knee flexion moment, and it helps initiate the swing phase and produces a nice knee flexion acceleration. So it's really the balance of these muscles that achieves the right knee flexion velocity at toe off so that you can have a, a nice ballistic swing phase. So, that's a quick overview of muscle actions during the swing phase. We'll move on next to talk about muscle actions during crouch gait.